this evening, insha'Allah ta'ala, is for every one of our sisters who loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that lives in defense of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and lives for Jannah, that has forgotten who she is. I want to speak to you, but the real you. I don't want to speak to the lipstick or the color contacts or the pink hair or the loud gum or the head bouncing to the iPod or the cowgirl boots or the fake nails I want to speak to you the real you, your heart and your soul and your mind about those things buried deep down inside of you that I wish that you could remember don't you remember who you are? وَنِسَاءٌ كَاسِيَاتٌ عَارِيَاتٌ مَائِلَاتٌ مُمِلَاتٌ And women that are kasiyat, they have clothes on, they have fabric on their bodies. عَارِيَات, but they're naked. They're wearing clothes, but it's as if they're not wearing anything. Their clothes are offering no concealment for them, like the women we see nowadays. Ma'ilat, mumilat. They sway side to side in the way they walk, the way they talk, and the way they interact with the opposite gender. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يدخلنا الجنة ولا يجدنا ريحها They do not enter Jannah, these two types of people. And they will not even be able to find the fragrance of Jannah. The women that leave the house, with the shape of their bodies defined, or their hair shown, or they are decorated in one way, shape, or form, or they are perfumed. Every neck that turns, every eye that looks, you share in the sin of the person that committed it. You can be thinking about a million and one things from the moment you leave your house till the moment you return. You can be thinking about school, and exams, and shopping, and email, and studying, and friends, and appointments. You could be upon the bus, reading Qur'an, or making dhikr. And you don't even realize it, that guy whose eyes fall on your thigh, or his eyes fall upon your arms, or your neck, or your waist, or your legs, any of this, you get the exact same sin because you made that sin a possibility. You made it available. And it appeared to them before Allah what they never expected. Sins and sins and sins and sins, mountains. Never expected it. Some people will come on the Day of Judgment and this will be their condition. So Allah, it's not just another sin. Our enemies, the enemies of Allah, the enemies of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa the enemies of the Qur'an, the enemies of the believing men and women, they tricked the women, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, into selling herself like a piece of flesh on the streets. They brainwashed the woman into thinking that whatever attention she can draw to herself, that means she's liberated. They did it, for example, with the anti-Islam propaganda. They throw a bunch of women on screen with hijab on and they say this is the definition of oppression, 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 oppression. And something repeated so many times begins to settle in the minds and taken for granted as a reality and as a fact. Add on top of that, as sociologists will tell you, this is not some random guess. Trained specialists and researchers tell you that a woman when she dress, dresses more provocatively, she gets 14% better wage. The higher the skirt, the higher the pay. The more buttons open on the blouse, the higher the pay. The prettier the hair, the higher the pay. They trick the women into thinking the attention they can grab to what? To feed their perverse desires. They brainwashed women into thinking that was value. And they thought they were liberated. And they finally achieved equality. But I want to say, they might have tricked the women. 
I want to say they might have tricked the women, but not you. Not my sister. Not the slave of Allah. You would not fall for that. You are wiser than that. Sister, my sister. Oh, daughter of Islam. You see, that's who you are. The daughter of Islam. That girl jumping around on screen in the music videos, that's not you. That girl dressed in a business suit, staying late in a private office as someone's secretary, that's not you. That fool on the billboard, that's not you. Sister, O oh daughter of Islam, become modest. Do not remove the veil. Do not remove the hijab from upon you and then become regretful. Guard your beauty if it's honor that you seek. Because the people around you are like wolves on the prow. Wallahi, it's so true. They killed in you the most beautiful thing about you. al haya modesty. Sister, oh you who spends hours in front of the mirror, looking at herself. Don't you know that Allah is watching you? And looking at you as you are sitting there or standing there pleased at what you are preparing of the disobedience of Allah? O sister who spends such large sums of money at the salon to give herself the new look for the party or the streets or the classroom or the boardwalk, how much would you pay to fix your look before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Sister, wallahi I fear for you. How many beautiful girls with beautiful skin got tried with skin cancer? That is so common females nowadays. How many beautiful girls had to go through a procedure? An agonizing, depressing, grievous procedure because she's tried with breast cancer. You think these diseases were always so common? Wallahi, they were not. Not in the age of obedience. I fear for you, a punishment to come down from Allah. Veil yourself. And I fear for you, that you don't really think you're going to die. Wallahi, you're going to die. We said this many times over and over again. That guy, that you turned his neck in the street, Wallahi, he will not benefit you when you are on that piece of wood and they are washing your body with that cold water. So they say a Muslim woman is oppressed. Let's find the facts. And those who are calling for the freedom of women, let's call for the equality. Let's call for justice. Let's save these Muslim women from the oppression of today. So let's free her, please. Free her from what? Free her from her dignity, of course. Free her from the clothes that she wears. Free her from the pride that she has. Free her that she doesn't know who the ancestors were. Let's free this girl. Let's set her free. Come on, girl, come on down. Come on down, where you have no value. Come on down, where your price is for the highest bidder. Come on down, where every time they can hear you will look at you. Come on down that you'll be judged according to 36, 24, 36. If you fit the bill, you're good. How big the measurement, how good you look, it's not what you have inside, it's what you have outside. It is a superficial, short-lived, a mission stick that is judged by a human being. They put you like a, a hanger. They put the clothes on. This year is uh, red, everybody wears red. This year is black, everybody wears black. It's below the knee, it's above the knee, it's cut from the right, it's cut from the left, cut from the front, cut from the back. You feel like a toy. You're a slave to a man that tells you what to do, what not to do, what to wear, what not to wear. Is that the freedom you're telling me about? Or are you a slave to Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula? A man that doesn't care who you are, where you go, you're gonna end up in the hellfire after him? Or Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula that wants you to go in eternal happiness? Is that the freedom you're telling me about? If this is who you are? It's a choice you have to make, Ukhti. Every successful man needs a Khadija. So the first person to embrace Islam was a woman. The first person to die for Islam was a woman. Sumayya. The greatest scholar of Islam was a woman. 
that issue. The person who loved the prophet the most was a woman. Who was that woman? The father. The person who made the biggest sacrifice for Islam in one day was a woman. Khansa. One of the greatest fighters in Islamic history was a woman. Khawla bint al Aswar. She fought on the back of horses, killed many kuffar, and spurred the mujahideen on to go on.